All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We have the 2003 Honda CR85R that we are going to be rebuilding the forks and the shock on. We will have to get the shock um, charged with nitrogen from a local shop, so not a big deal. But we're going to try and bang these out real quick. This is our first time, so stick with me. Uh, I'm going to be going by the book on this, basically, is what it comes down to. But if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell that we can come on back, check out what we got going on. Like I said, always fixing a ride something. Check us out on Instagram too. I'm pretty much posting on there every day, um, multiple times per week for sure. So let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, so we got the forks off of the bike. I got the caps loosened. We're gonna go ahead and get the oil out. Not much oil in there, just as I suspected. Okay, next we're gonna pop off this other end here. Uh, I wanna make sure that you back out both of your adjustment screws all the way. Get yourself a 19 millimeter. You may have to grab a hold of this thing. Just set that aside and go ahead and dump out the rest. Should be able to pull the stack right out. Next, we're gonna pop off the dust seal here. And then on the inside, there's a little ring in there. Just wanna grab that, grab that and pop it out. You should be able to just pop the old seal out, just like that. Then to get all this stuff off here, I want to use a screwdriver and just to separate this old bearing now, if you're or this old bushing. If you're going to use it, just be careful. And the slide bushing will come off. And remember what order you keep everything in if you've never done this before like myself and so this stuff will all get cleaned so I'm gonna go ahead and put these over in the parts washer to get cleaned here real quick and then you're gonna to want to separate this piece here these uh, two parts you want to separate the cap from this stack and you'll get yourself a 17 millimeter and a 14 millimeter This will completely unscrew here. Now you want to be careful taking this rod out of here so you don't damage it. And then you can unscrew this rod because in the kit, the Pivot Works kit, comes with all these O-rings in here. And you know, these aren't probably aren't bad, but you know what? We're going to replace them anyways. One right there, and then there's also another one in this air valve here, air release valve, right there. And then you'll want to take off this little retainer ring so you can pop this off and get this bushing out of here. It's a little tricky. We're off. And then you got this rubber stack bushing. 
then you get an o-ring here that comes out and then this is ready to be cleaned take this rubber o-ring as well don't worry about manhandling these old ones one there and one here uh, then you got your spring that's basically it so this is all these are all your parts here so we're gonna take these over to the parts washer and get all this stuff cleaned up and the manual says to use a high flash point which means it's uh, the fumes aren't gonna light real easy so to clean all this stuff off so I'm gonna take all the stuff over there we'll get it cleaned up and bring it back okay so we got the parts back uh, from being cleaned here so we're just gonna go ahead and start putting on all these little o-rings You just have to be careful putting them on. You don't want to mess them up. To be honest, I could probably do this without gloves right now. Round side goes inward. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but most, if not all chemicals, uh, especially petroleum have a chemical called, I think it's, uh, Benzidine or something like that, uh, Benadinezidine. I don't know exact. I can't remember exactly what the name is, but overexposure to that can cause leukemia. So that's why gloves are, you know, not just to keep your hands clean, but you know, you want to keep your hands away from this kind of stuff as much as possible. Really is what it comes down to. Okay, so once you got your O-ring, you want to make sure that you got a nice coating of oil on there. This is for your rebound on these 85s. Then you want to make sure you screw it in all the way, which is your rebounds all the way out, softest position. And go ahead and put in your air release valve, air bleeding valve, or your air bleeding screw, whatever you like to call it. Oh, great. And you'll go ahead and coat this. You'll slip this spring on. And the springs, uh, as far as I know, these aren't directional. But, you know, if you can remember which way they went in, um, that's fine. It seemed like the darker end was uh, down at the bottom here. And you'll carefully stick this plunger in here. And this is kind of a tricky part. So what I did is used a couple different things. 
So as far as this bolt goes there, this nut here, you just want to bottom it out. It doesn't have to be uh, locked down or anything. It just needs to bottom out, that's all. And then I take a 7 16 inch uh, uh, wrench here just to hold the stack steady. And the 7 16 inch wrench will push up using the spring as leverage to hold it in place. And then this wrench will stop the center rod from spinning, and then you can screw the cap onto it. And this end is a 17 millimeter. And the torque spec for this cap being screwed on to this rod here is 15 foot pounds. Okay, so once you have that assembled, we're gonna go ahead and start on the, the shaft here. And uh, the first thing you wanna do is slip on your bullet. And this is actually a 36 millimeter bullet I got off of uh, Rocky Mountain and this is a 37 millimeter shaft. I had to heat it up so it would stretch out and it looks like it uh, kind of retracted a little but it's a tight fit. They didn't have a 37 millimeter so it does fit on there it's just extremely tight. And You just want to make sure that it butts up over the sharp edge and you're good to go. So next, you wanna coat all this in oil. And then the first thing to go on is your new dust ring, dust seal. Coat that up in oil as well. And just go ahead and Slip it on. Next goes the retainer ring. And then your oil seal. Just go ahead and coat the inner lips. So if you see there's a, a thinner side and a thicker side, you want the thicker side to go down. And then they do give you a new backup ring as well. And you want the rounded edges to go up. It's kind of tough to get off, but it works. You can use this, or you can wrap saran wrap over here. You can wrap electrical tape. More than one way to skin a cat, as they say. The last two pieces here are these bushings. And you'll want to spread this like you did the other one to get it off and it'll pop right on. Almost forgot to put this o-ring on here. Almost forgot to put that on. Just popped right over the edge there. Now you can go ahead and start uh, the assembly process of these parts. So the first thing we want to do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this Cool thing is with this this Pivot Works package, they actually give you new wear rings, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna pop those in. It's kind of like a piston ring. You just put one side in first, and then it slips on. So we're gonna make sure we have ample oil on the inside here. It'll help the, the seal the seat a little bit easier. Let's go 
go ahead and carefully slip these in. Put our ring down. And then we'll just pop this up over the dust seal out of the way. Now I elected to, to make my own um, tool here. So I'm gonna get set up and I'll show you what that is. Okay, so all I did was cut a piece of PVC um, fitting that I had because the outer diameter of these is 37 millimeters, which is just shy of an uh, inch and a half. So this actually worked out to where um, it fits pretty good. And then I just take this um, hose clamp and wrap it around there and uh, just kind of pound it in. So I'll go ahead and set that up now. It's not the most high-tech setup, but it works. I've seen people use uh, chunks of leather wrapped around. I've seen uh, electrical tape wrapped around real tight and then banged in. So it's similar. Um, bottom line is it does its job. All right, so once you get it set up to where it'll slide nice and easy, um, I actually will use uh, this mallet as well as uh, this piece here and it just helps to work it in all the way around the edges. And the rubber mallet doesn't hurt anything at all. It's going in little by little. Sure, it's probably easier the other way, but this will do. And yes, it's hot as heck today, if you guys are wondering. I'm sweating my butt off. And I don't have the fan on because I my old one busted, and so I got a new one, and it's a little louder. Just about to see the ring groove. I'm sure somebody will chime in and go, dude, that was brutal to watch. Wouldn't be the first time that happened. Sometimes you got to do things the hard way to know how good the easy way is. It's right there. I'm thinking that's it. All right, guys, I had to turn the fan on. Sorry blow this out get any debris out of there then we're just gonna pop this ring in if, as long as it's down far enough okay so we got the snap ring in there next is to just pull the dust ring down pops right into place okay so next what we want to do is put the stack in so we're just gonna go ahead and hit this with some oil as well not sure if you have to do this but why not can only help Then we'll just slide it in through the top here. And we'll lube up this bottom assembly. And 
we'll go ahead and hit it with the impact. Now we're going to go ahead and put this in the vise and fill it up. Okay, so the oil that we're using today is Maxima. So I want to thank Maxima for the 85 to 150 uh, anti-stiction racing formula. This is a five weight fork oil. And of course, also pivot works for the rebuild kit. These are for 03 to 07 CR85Rs. So the stock amount of oil that goes in these forks is 357 cc's. If you want it softer, you can put 354. Or if you want it stiffer, you can put 361. But that's really just at the bottom of the stroke, so we're just going to go with the stock setting. And because of the way these are built, uh, they're not like the full size ones. So what I'm being told is that you can just go ahead and assemble them. There's no need to really even uh, bleed the air other than when you uh, ride them for a couple minutes, when you first get the bike back up and running, and then you can just go ahead and uh, use the the air pressure bleed valve here and that will remove the air I mean you're supposed to do that in between motos anyway so but with these it's they're a little they're a little bit different than say a, like a, a full-size CRF 250R or a CR 125 or 250 and these get torqued to 25 foot-pounds but we're gonna do that on a bike All right, guys, I just wanted to communicate something to you that's pretty important. So you have your rebound adjustment valve at the top, okay? And that is actually based off of this, the level at which the cap is set on the push rod here. And you set, that's why there's a lock nut, you set it based off of uh, where the cap is screwed down and then you take this little lock nut and you screw it up the threads on the push rod to the cap. So what I found is that if you unscrew the valve all the way at the top and then count in three turns exactly, then you go ahead and loosen up this nut all the way to the base, the bottom of that push rod there, and then you screw the cap on until it starts to turn the push rod what will happen is that valve will lightly bottom out down at the bottom and then it will start to turn the actual push push rod tube there so once you hit that point then you just go ahead and lock the nut to the base you turn it up the threads of the push rod and then lock it to the base of this cap here and that will give you your exact setting because what I ran into I'm actually redoing this right now what I ran into is that um, I was getting like three and three quarter turns on this one and, um, not enough on the other. So I actually set this one a little higher than it should have been. And the other one, I was screwing the cap all the way down to the nut and then turning it because the manual kind of makes it seem like that. It doesn't really go into detail on the CR 85 R repairs like it does in the CRF 250 R models. Uh, service manuals so just wanted to let you guys know that real quick before I go ahead and get these uh, back together and on the bike all right guys so I went ahead and rebuilt the other one off camera so I'm gonna go ahead and slip these on the bike and then we'll torque these down and that is it
You want to make sure that your air bleed valves are facing forward for ease of access. And then go ahead and pinch these bottom bolts. Tighten these up just to snug it up and then you can torque this here. And the caliper I just hung by a wire off of the heat sinks, or off of the radiator shrouds. These two bolts get torqued to 22 foot lines. Last thing to do is to put our fork guards back on. Okay, so we're gonna adjust the compression now. Already adjusted the rebound on top, and that is, uh, you screw it all the way in to a full hard, and then you back it out one and a quarter, that's stock setting. And it says the compression dampening adjuster has about uh, 15 positions or more. So turning the adjuster screw one full turn advances the adjuster four positions. Um, it says to always start a hard full position when adjusting the dampening. So we'll go ahead and turn that all the way in. And then it says to, uh, that will put it at the full hard position and then to turn the adjuster clock counterclockwise or back it out, nine clicks. And this will be the standard position. And then you always wanna make sure that the forks are adjusted to the same. It's kind of hard to get a good view under here, so we're just going to All right. So that's all the way in. We're going to go 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine. But if we're going to be riding around Michigan, we're going to stiffen it up a little bit because we got a lot of sand around here. So I think we're probably going to go down to like, let's do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're probably going to go in on the rebound as well. So now we'll do this side. That's 13, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so here are the rebound adjustment clickers. Although these don't seem like they actually click. So that's all the way in. That's a half. 
we're going to do a one on both of these. So that was a quarter, half, one. So then we'll come out, half, another half. All right. So we're going to get it off the stand and see how that feels. But that should be good to go. We're going to start on the rear shock now. Um, that'll be in the next video. So, All right, guys. That is it. Got the bike back together. And, yeah, the suspension feels better. Especially to Calvin. He noticed right away. When I put him on it, or when I got him out here, I told him just, uh, before we set the uh, static sag and race sag, um, I told him to grab the handlebars and give it a few shoves. And, yeah, he definitely noticed the difference, so that's good. And then uh, set the race tag, the best I could get it with his 72 pounds body, and then all his gear. Maybe put him at, I don't know, 77, 78 pounds total. Uh, maybe 80 pounds. But I got it to, uh, static sag is supposed to be between 10 and 25. And I got it to 27, and then uh, standard... I'm not sure if it's minimum, but the standard uh, race sag for the CR85 is supposed to be 85. I got it to 75. So if I went, you know, to where it sagged anymore, it'd be way over on static sag. So I think it's common enough ground right now for his weight. He'll grow into it. So, but yeah, that's it. I'm probably gonna end up doing the shock next. I do have a rebuild kit for that, and then I'll have to get it char uh, charged up with some nitrogen. But uh, that's for another video. So I hope you guys found some useful tips or if you guys have any questions on what you saw, uh, ask in the comment section and I'll get back to you in a timely fashion. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video either way. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the alert bell that way you're notified of future updates to for my video series and the channel, the whole nine yards. And don't forget to smash the like button, always appreciate that. And check us out on Instagram, like I say every video, I always post some stuff on there as well. So. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video, so take care. Come on back, and God bless.